Bill McKenna and I uh, work at Washington University in St. Louis and I'm interested in pretty much everything about Pluto but really the, its geology and geophysics and especially its origin and where it came from and how it evolved. When I began to work on Pluto, literally the number of people who were thinking about Pluto you could count on the fi you know, fingers of your hands and it was a, sort of a, a fun little hobby okay, to be sort of a Plutophile in those days. We have a fantastic new vision of the solar system that it went through a violent phase of instability and the giant planets uh, were much more closer together in the beginning and then they spread out and they scattered small bodies everywhere but especially bodies into what we call the Kuiper Belt and Pluto is at the moment still the king of the Kuiper Belt in terms of linear dimension the largest body there but even though it's out there at nearly 40 astronomical units and travels in a big arc of an orbit farther and closer to the sun over hundreds of years, it actually was born much closer to the sun. If Pluto formed close to the sun, that means it probably formed pretty fast. And when you form fast, you get hot and therefore melted its ice and the rock settled into the center. And now you have a great setup. You have a, basically a rock core, an ice shell over, over that, and then in between, sandwiched in between, would be an ocean of liquid water with all sorts of interesting dissolved chemicals. And the best way we can tell that is probably to just study the geology and the composition of the surface in detail, which is exactly what we're going to do. And we, if it's pretty round, we'll be much more comfortable with it being an active body and maybe even having an ocean today, which would be very exciting. I think we will see craters. I think we will see the remnants of icy volcanic structures. And I know that sounds bizarre. And some we even call it, have a bizarre name for it. We call it cryovolcanism, cold volcanism that we're talking about, erupted ammonia or erupted methane or even erupted liquid nitrogen. These are the kinds of things that could go on on the surface of, of Pluto. Anybody who thinks that when we go to Pluto and we're going to find cold, dead ice balls is in for, in for a rude shock. <laughs> but I'm really hoping to see a very active and dynamic world. Uh, I'm Bill McKinnon and I'm a Plutophile because Pluto is the last unexplored outpost of the solar system. The furthest, the farthest, the least known. <laughs>